And finally, this may be one of my favorites. They say, no uterus, no opinion. In other words, if you don't have a uterus, if you don't have a female body, then you don't get to, you, you don't get to have an opinion on the issue of abortion. There's a number of reasons why this is a really terrible example. First of all, it's one of the laziest debate tactics in any, this isn't even exclusive to abortion, this intersectionality nonsense that has run rampant through the Democrat Party is one of the laziest debate tactics I've ever seen because what they're trying to do is they're trying to whittle down the pool of people who are allowed to even comment and they disregard your comment if you don't fit into that particular class of people. The quickest way to end this argument is to just say, okay, well, I guess Abraham Lincoln should not have spoken about slavery because that was a issue that affected black people. Well, if you, and if they say, well, no, 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 that was different because slavery was wrong. Okay, so what you're saying is only the only thing that matters in this debate, the only people that get to express an opinion in this debate are people that agree with me. In fact, that was what was happening on Twitter. You had, it was funny, there was almost a division between the pro-choice movement. There were people that saying men aren't allowed to comment on this. And then there were other women saying that men ought to comment on this and they ought to stand up with women for our reproductive rights. And so there's no consistency on the left whatsoever. They're saying men shouldn't comment, men should comment. And, and there's really no consistency on that whatsoever. But nonetheless, it is a lazy, lazy debate tactic to try to exclude all the opinions that you don't want. In other words, well, if you disagree with me, then your opinion doesn't matter. You could say that about any issue, and it's just your way of being dismissive of arguments which you find to be incorrect without actually having to fight the argument. They're trying to shut you up as opposed to actually winning the fight, winning the debate. It would kind of like be, if I were pitching and well we won't use Bryce Harper because he's kind of dying on the vine right now in Philadelphia but if if I were the starting pitcher and that's a scary thought because I can't pitch but if I were the pitcher and you had a a different player you know uh, we'll, we'll use a brave since we're the home of the Braves let's say uh Ender Enciarte steps up and I'm got like uh, I'm not pitching to him I want I want you to go, you know, he's not a valid player. He needs to go away. I don't accept that he is allowed to bat in this lineup. Well, at that point, you can tell it's not that I want to actually win the game. It's not that I actually want to beat him. I don't want to have to compete against him. And that's what's going on in this thing. What is going on here is that you have people that realize that they can't win the argument or rather would not like to engage in the discussion, and so they're trying to silence the voice of anybody that disagrees with them. And it's very convenient that you're knocking out half the population and you're saying half the population isn't allowed to have an opinion on this. But another thing that is important here is that it also operates off the premise that women are pro-abortion or men are against abortion and it's because men are trying to control women through the patriarchy the problem is the numbers do not bear that out according to a pew research poll which was taken back in december of 2018 men and women don't differ very much on their opinions of abortion there's a little difference but not much in fact there were 58 percent of men that agreed that abortion should be legal in most cases 60 percent of women said the same thing that's in the u.s but if you look at it worldwide, in the vast majority of countries, the differentiation is even smaller. There's just simply, without, you know, whether or not you look at it, how popular or non popular it is in some countries, there's very little breathing room between men and women on whether or not they think it should be legal or illegal. And so trying to frame it in such a way that they're trying to say, well, only men are for this and therefore men's opinion shouldn't matter. Only women should matter. And if you're saying that it just doesn't make any sense because there's not a lot of breathing room if you're looking at the whole picture between men and women anyway. The USA Today did the same thing in Huffington Post, followed suit. They said 25 white men, white senators are the ones from Alabama that passed this bill. Well, yes, 
but you're completely ignoring the fact that Terry Collins is the sponsor of the bill who's been on this program before. She's the one that brought the bill up in the first place in the House. She's a lady. There were other female representatives in the state house that voted in favor of this. And the governor that signed it into law yesterday, Kay Ivey, is a woman. And so they, they try to paint this picture. It's a bunch of men deciding things for women. No. There are just as many women that are in favor of this bill as men. It just so happened that in the Senate, which is predominantly male on both sides of the aisle, that the only ones that voted in favor of it were men. But in the House, there were several women that voted for it. If you were to take a survey of how people of Alabama feel about abortion, you're going to get very little breathing room between men and women as who finds it favorable and who doesn't. And that is true across not only the U.S., that's true across every country as Pew Research found. So they're trying to frame the argument in such a way, but it really just does not work because when they're trying to do this, it, it falls apart as soon as you look at the numbers and the approval numbers of abortion between men and women. And furthermore, what they're trying to craft it in such a way, and this is so important when you're in a debate, you always want to take their ideas kind of out for a test drive and apply it to a different situation and see, does this rationale really hold? Would this work in another situation if the parameters were pretty similar? So essentially the assertion is, if you are incapable of getting pregnant, if you're incapable of giving birth, if you cannot be directly affected by abortion, then you shouldn't be able to have a say in it. Well, what about lesbians? Do lesbians not get a say on abortion because they're not really in a position where they're very likely to get pregnant? What about girls that have not quite reached the age where they can conceive? What about women that are barren? What about women that have already gone through menopause and can't get pregnant again? Do their opinions, are they now null and void because they can't be directly affected by the issue? I have a friend that went through chemotherapy. She's a cancer survivor just like me, and she can't have children anymore. That's a side effect of chemotherapy. In fact, I honestly don't even know if, if I've been affected by that or not. I, I haven't been tested for that. Uh, I assume that it didn't didn't happen to me, but it could have. This is something that women that go through chemotherapy have to worry about. They have to worry about being sterilized as a side effect of those drugs. Do those women no longer have an opinion on abortion? Are they now disqualified from having that opinion? You see, when you take that logic out for a test drive, you can see very clearly that applied to virtually any other situation how fast that falls apart. Apply it to something that isn't directly related to abortion. Let's say child abuse. Well, I'm not a parent, and I don't have any children, and I'm no longer a child myself. I'm, I'm 29 years old now. Does that mean I'm no longer qualified to speak on the issue of child abuse? Or child molestation. I can't be a victim of that crime. Does that mean I'm no longer allowed to talk on that? You see, there's absolutely no world where this makes any sense whatsoever. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.